Chapter 13 is concerned with implementing and controlling the strategic plan. By whatever method strategies are selected, there will come a time when every organisation will need to put its strategies into practice, i.e. to implement them. This chapter explores the basic steps involved in this process and the links between strategy development and implementation. It begins by defining the nature of the implementation process. It then continues with three short sections on objectives and task setting, resource allocation, and monitoring and controlling the strategic plan. It then moves on to consider the balanced scorecard, which pulls the whole thing together before finishing with a section on prescriptive planning concepts and problems. The nature of the implementation process involves four basic elements. One, identification of general strategic objectives. Two, formulation of specific plans. Three, resource allocation and budgeting in order to achieve the objectives. And four, monitoring and control procedures, ensuring that the objectives are being met, that only the agreed resources are being spent, and that our budgets are being adhered to. With regard to objectives, task setting, and communicating the strategy, it's useful to establish first who developed the strategy that is to be implemented. This will influence the implementation process. Individual objectives and tasks will then follow from the agreed objectives. It may be necessary to experiment to find the optimal combination of events. And in fast-changing environments, rigid objectives may be made redundant by outside events. Communication and coordination are vital to satisfactory implementation and are especially important to ensure understanding of the plan and its underlying assumptions. The resource allocation process provides the necessary funds for proposed strategies. Where resources are limited, allocation of funds is usually from the center of the organization using various decision criteria. Criteria for allocation include the delivery of the organization's mission and objectives, the support of key strategies, and the organization's risk-taking profile, together with special circumstances, such as unusual changes in the environment. Monitoring and control systems are important in assessing strategy implementation and how the environment is changing. The necessity of obtaining information in sufficient time to take the required action is crucial. There are a number of ways in which strategic controls can be improved. All rely on having simple, cost-effective and useful information about the organization and its environment. Turning to the balanced scorecard, this was developed as a method of translating abstract strategy from a company or an organization in the public sector into specific details of company action to help the strategy to work. The balance scorecard combines quantitative and qualitative measures of the selected strategy. It acknowledges the different expectations of the various stakeholders and it attempts to link scorecard performance measures to the chosen strategy. The main benefits of the scorecard lie in its focus on turning strategy into implementation and the development of objectives that go beyond simple financial measures. There are four key principles behind the scorecard. Number one, translating the vision through clarifying and gaining consensus. Number two, communicating and linking by setting goals and establishing rewards for success. Number three, business planning to align objectives, allocate resources, and establish milestones to measure success along the way. And number four, feedback and learning to review the subsequent performance against the plan. 
V4 strategy perspectives that then appear on every scorecard are one, financial, two, customer, three, internal, and four, future. These are translated into four steps, strategy objectives, setting targets, identifying measurement criteria, and developing strategy initiatives. The targets are summarized as key performance indicators. More generally, the task of strategic planning is to make the strategy process operational in some organizations, but it's no substitute for basic and innovative strategic thinking. The basic process of strategic planning may well cover such areas as background assumptions, long-term vision, medium-term plans, and short-term plans. Importantly, the input of new ideas and revisions to the process are significant elements of its development. Strategic planning has been criticized heavily by some researchers as being too bureaucratic and rigid, but attitudes towards it are beginning to mellow as long as the process is not too narrowly defined.